Ben Forster has had an eclectic career, and now he's the magnetic star of the Phantom of the Opera, which is in its 30th year here in London. I'm here at the Covent Garden Hotel to talk to the star. The Phantom of the Opera is here. Hi, Ben Forster. Inside your mind. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Hi. Hi, thanks for coming and doing this oh, today. Thank you for having me. How's it going over there at Her Majesty's Theatre? It's good. It's amazing. I've been there for about seven or eight months now, so I finally feel like I found my feet. It's weird with a, with a role like Phantom. It's so iconic and it's so huge. And actually, when I was in rehearsal, I felt like I had it then. And when I opened, I was like, oh no, I'm in a good place, it's good. And then a month later you go, oh, I'm in a much better place than I was a month <laughs> ago. And then now I still feel like uh, I find new things and new reasons and new ways to do things. And I feel like it develops all the time, actually. Now you have a history with Andrew Lloyd Webber. This is, your, yeah. is this your third Andrew Lloyd Webber show? Uh, third. Um, because you did uh, Jesus, Jesus Christ uh, Superstar and the Vita. Vita. Yeah, your third. I think once he finds a talent, he wants to keep that person working. And there's so many opportunities for that. I think. I mean, I think the great thing about Andrew that he he is one of the the main people that see people for having many sides. Mm. I think he can. He doesn't just pigeonhole someone. I think if he sees that you're talented enough to do one thing, he can go. Actually, maybe he will be good at this. And when he listens to you do it, then you know he can see that we are all really versatile. You know, a lot of the time actors get put into a box. I think Andrew's really good at. Uh, knowing that people have different abilities and and wanting to push people also to to see those other the other sides uh, Which he's done for such a long time, you know, he always has unusual casting choices mm -hmm. in things and They're always usually genius. So, you know, he's, he's 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 a genius. He knows what he's doing So I read tell me if this is true. It could just be a rumor. Yeah, that Phantom was your first show that you saw My very very first West End show that I saw and I came on a seven-hour um, bus journey from the north of England from Sunderland. It took all night. Um, pulled it, stayed in a dodgy hotel in Heathrow, like <laughs> coming to central London from Sunderland, but stayed in Heathrow. Uh, <laughs> but it was like a, I think it was like a, a trip that you pay like a package. Oh, I you see. get to London, you stay in a hotel, you eat McDonald's and you go to the theatre, that sort of... How old were you? I was 10. Oh, OK. Uh, and it was like the most exciting thing. I remember sitting in the theatre watching Phantom and it's just so magical and it's so beautiful and I remember being in awe. I remember going outside and sitting on the bus and, and saying to my mum, do they all get paid for that? <laughs> like that's a real, like, that's a job. That's a real job. And she was like, yeah, yeah, that's what they've chosen to do and they've dedicated their whole lives to it. and. It's like, yeah, that's what I want to do. And now you're Have full circle, you that. are the Phantom. Yeah. It's amazing. And yeah. for the 30th anniversary, which is coming up this, which feels, this fall. Uh, I feel so lucky. I mean, that's, it's such a beautiful thing to be involved in at such a, an amazing time. You know, 30 years. It's amazing, Phantom, that it's run for 30 years because we still sell out, you know. We've been yeah. sold out for two weeks. The last two weeks is completely sold out, no spare seat, which is so rare. I mean, there's, there's brand new, brilliant, shows in London that everyone wants to, to go and see and we're still selling out. It's it's incredible. Is there a brotherhood of phantoms? I know you're friends with Ramin <coughs> Karamloo. I am, yeah. Uh, and John. On John's, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. There isn't, I mean, I think that we all kind of give each other a nod, you know, there's a mutual respect. I just did, um, I was doing Elf the Musical in, in the West End over Christmas and my uh, Father Christmas, Mark, was an old phantom. And he was like, oh, you're going to have a lovely <laughs> he told me all the do's and don'ts and all oh, the tricks. Oh, are there tricks? Well, there's things that can help you survive. It I is think. a difficult thing. It's very difficult. And also, you know, the, the main thing is the emotion and the shouting and, and being, you know, the phantom. You have to use so much power in your voice. Um, and I think that's the kind of thing that I've now, like, eight months on. I'm like, okay, I know what to where to show, where to hold back, mm -hmm. you know, and you've kind of, you have got to discover that actually. And you have such an eclectic resume, because I can't think of another phantom that was Buddy the Elf, or yeah. in Rocky Horror. <laughs> yeah, Buddy the Elf was, within a week, uh, going from Buddy to, to Phantom was, was Whiplash. hard, was weird for my brain. Uh, <laughs> but I, I wouldn't have it any other way. I feel so lucky. I mean, yes, I can, you know, pl play an idiot and, you know, do the whole comedy thing, which I love. I mean, making 2,200 people in the Dominion Theatre, hell with laughing, mm -hmm. that is a gift as much as making people cry 
in a phantom or making them terrified of you or making them fall in love with you, you know. It, it's all, it's all w the reason why we perform. It's the reason why we want to do it, is to evoke emotion in people, and whether it's laughing or crying or being scared or falling in love. It's, um, it's an amazing ability to be able to do that as an actor. I don't think our American um, viewers or audiences really know that you won the Jesus Christ Superstar oh, yeah. talent <coughs> competition, I guess I yeah, could call it that. Yeah, it was kind of like American Idol, but for a role. Uh, Were you, Jesus was it Christ. cutthroat for you? It was awful. Really? It, was, it was honestly the, the worst, most terrifying experience of my life. I mean, I would, I would so never very not public do it. auditions every week. I would never not do it. Uh, I'm so pleased that I did it. Whether I could do it again, knowing what was around every corner, and how much stress and, and pressure and terrifying moments that I would experience doing that, I, I don't think I could do it again knowing. Did you watch the other ones because they did it for The Sound of yeah, Music yeah. and Oliver? I did, yeah. And it, I mean, it's just so easy watching. It's like anything, you know, if, if people make things look easy and it just rolls and you switch on and you're having your cup of tea or your glass of wine and you're watching something, you don't realise. I was, I was having a cup of tea, watching it live on TV in my dressing room and oh then it, they'd go, no, 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 you're on next. And I'd be like, okay, yeah, yeah, fine, yeah. Just gonna go and jump into the TV. <laughs> Form that song live and hopefully not get the words wrong or fall over or look at the wrong camera. So or you, it was so alive that you could <coughs> actually see it and then go I walking. was watching live, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. I was like on after commercial break kind of thing. So yeah, it was terrifying. And just to stay focused and healthy, it was 10 nights in a row. After the live show at 10 o'clock, whoever had left and been eliminated, if they'd had a better, more expensive song that the orchestra were booked for, or that there was a 10,000 piano booked for, or that there was something happening, they'd be like, Yo, you've got to sing that song now. You've just spent two months rehearsing your song, but it'd be better if you sing this song. Okay, then. Oh my God. What's the words? <laughs> you can rehearse as it is. Okay, brilliant. I don't think I would ever face so much pressure again uh, in my life. I know that I can kind of do anything now after that. I just want to say that you are a delight on social media. Oh. You are so much fun. Thanks. I learned all <laughs> kinds of secrets about you. I know. I'm not. I'm, a, I'm quite an open book. Sometimes a bit too open, I suppose. But your fans are really interacting with they you. Are, oh my god! I've got an amazing group of fans. I absolutely adore them, and I do think it's kind of like a banter that we have. Because you respond to people. I respond, and I always try and respond. And if I don't, it's because my timeline's been going wild, or mm. I've had a crazy day, and there's been a few hours, and I can't look back so much but I don't know I mean I do my own thing and you know my fans are so loyal and so lovely and because of Jesus Christ Superstar being in cinemas mm. they're all over the world um, so you know there's Japanese, Chinese, Australian, South That's American, amazing. American it's lovely and I feel like if I can't connect with them there then you know it's just at stage door. You know what you're doing? You're talking to that little ten-year-old boy who is staying out at Heathrow and eating McDonald's and seeing. Uh, hopefully, I mean, I didn't, I couldn't do that right. uh, when I was a kid, um, and it was all just a distant illusion for me. You know, it is nice being able to respond to to questions. I get a lot of questions from people saying, "How should I do this?" or "What school should I go to?" or "What should I concentrate on?" and asking for advice, which I'm always willing to answer, of course. That's so nice. Thank you for doing this today. Oh, it's thank so you. nice to see you. It's so nice to have a chat, yeah. Thank you very much. And go see Phantom of the Opera now in its 30th year. 30th year. And honestly, I would still say it's as, it's as good as ever. You know, they keep us in rehearsal all the time. I'm always in rehearsal. <laughs> the costumes are always remade. I've literally had like 10 suits. I've been there for eight months. I think it's incredible. It's little details about Phantom. That they keep it running like a machine. It. It's like a, a brilliantly well-oiled, still very expensive machine. Wonderful. Thank yeah. you so much, Ben. Thank you.